Hi guys, I'm back again. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is my tool shafts. These are 1018 cold rolled steel round bar. The inserts are 6061 aluminum. I get it at uh, onlinemetals.com. I think I may have mentioned this already. You don't have to get exotic steels. Unless you're dangling this way over the tool rest, which nobody recommends anyway you don't have any problem i haven't had a shaft bend i've done some deep hollowing haven't had a shaft bend or a bit turn but that's all you need it's a couple of bucks a foot for three eighths i think or a dollar or something a foot get three or four feet because if if you order more than five feet they're going to charge you a five dollar up charge just because ups has a five foot minimum but buy it in quantity save you even more money make you lots of tools tool handles PVC is cheap the aluminum is pretty cheap for aluminum uh, on the bench shaft ones that I had uh, excuse me I'm getting out of frame here on the bench shaft ones that I've made with I've got a 45 and about an 80 degree bend on the quarter inch tools I use a map gas torch heat lock it in the vise put a sacrificial bit in here and tighten it down before you do any bending because if you don't you're going to squish your hole but uh, the quarter inch I just do it in the vise uh, start bending it slow keep it there if I need to add more heat add more heat to it as I'm bending it you don't want to bend it to the point of breaking if it turns blue on the bend, it's it's going to because you got the metal hot. Don't worry about it. It ain't. It's not going to weaken it enough to where it's going to break. Three eighths inch on the other hand, uh, map gas torch won't heat it up enough to bend it. So what I do is I've got a burn pile out the shop here where I burn, uh, you know, trash wood that's absolutely not usable limbs from around here. I'll stick it down in the fire about a good four to six inches and I'll leave it there until it's glowing orange and then I'll grab it with a pair of ice grips obviously wearing leather gloves I'll run in here to the shop put it in the vise and bend it but don't forget to put a sacrificial bit the size of what you're drilling the hole for in here because you're gonna squish it closed if you do then you're screwed you're gonna have to make a new one it's enough on that um, Okay, doing the uh, little detailing tools like I showed you out of those extended uh, shaft drill bits. I've got two jigs I use. This is what I call my sled. It's 3 8 inch thick, 1 and a half inch wide, 6061 aluminum flat stock. Again, from uh, Online Metals. It's not up close enough, but see how it slides gives you plenty of room great little tool this one's for my eighth inch tools this one here was drilled quarter inch and three sixteenths inch uh, I don't know how long that is three three and a half inches the holes are drilled almost to where they meet so I can put the other end of an extended shaft tool in there and get it past the cutter so I don't run my edges. You can rotate it 90 degrees if you want, or however you want to do it. Um, also, it, you can't see this. What I've done is I've taken a punch, center punch, and right here on the face of all of these jigs on all sides, so I've made a little punch mark. Whenever I get my drill rod set in there and lock down what I'll do is I'll take a needle file run it across the top just enough to get through that black oxide that way you've got a those are your witness marks you can go back and get the same thing get in there same thing on everything else get it towards top one two three bumps and you're good 
the length of bevel you do on here, but whatever makes you happy. You just need to make sure you go past the halfway point for the diameter. Because that way you'll get a sharper cutting edge. I've done most of this one this morning just because it takes a while. But I'm going to go ahead and finish it up here a little bit. You'll see how I don't put much pressure on here. I'm not getting 4th of July sparks coming off this. I don't want to because this is a Norton 3X 100 grit wheel. I don't want to wear it down prematurely. I don't want to get this hot prematurely. And I've got quench water down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more and show you how I do this. Then I'll probably cut the video and show it mounted up in the oh the where'd I put it the turning tool setter from Tormac and I'll put it on this jet slow speed. Let me go ahead and finish this grind up here for you. And what I'll do <clears throat> it's gonna be noisy so I may not be able to talk over it. As I'm grinding it I move it back and forth slowly. Like I said make light cuts. You don't need fourth of July sparks. It doesn't matter if it looks hot or you think it's hot, quench it. Because you don't want to break the temper of the hardness on here. But here we go. Let's see if I can get some more light on there. Oh, this is a variable speed, 8 inch grinder, and I've got it on the lowest speed. Ten seconds and quench it. You see that steam coming off there. About ten more seconds, quench it. Steam coming off of it. Quench it a little bit more. Did you notice how there's hardly even a spark? Don't bear down hard. That way you won't wear out your wheel prematurely. If you're going to do a side grind, be very careful if you accidentally jab a sharp point in there. If you're not careful, you're going to break a chunk off and it's going to hit you in the face or the chest and it won't feel good. see there's no blue there's no blue on the end or the edges that's why I go slow so I don't get any blue now when you start doing the your radius on the ends which I'm going to start it on here using this but when you start your radius you go even slower because you're going to have thinner material to work with and then when you start doing your grinds I do my fingernail and bowl grind profiles on here then I finish them off on the jet with a Tormac jig uh, like so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round it off here I need to turn my tilt my rest up a little bit more 
be very careful when you're doing this, guys. I mean, common sense, safety. To get that started and what I'm gonna do what I'll do next I don't remember what size head screws I put in here they look like 832s that's all you need I've got my fingernail profile done I need to clean it up that's a good sharp point getting into tight detail the bowl profile that I'll do is more for smoothing out larger radius rounds and stuff. Uh, when I show you how to sharpen these, I probably won't have time to do it, or I may, but I'll show you on a scrap piece of wood just how sharp these things are. Uh, well, let me see how much time I got left on the video. I may show you one right quick. Eight minutes. Okay, I'm gonna put the quarter inch down. I'm gonna go over here and get the three sixteenths. Put it on the lathe again. Sorry about all the movement. Get her set up here for this. Of course, I'm gonna have to switch out to my jaws, to my chuck. But I'll just show you real quick how sharp these little cutters are. There we go, good clear focus. Get this junk out the way. Oops, something just shifted. I swear I didn't kick it. Okay. put together here on the 3 16 I'm going to show you uh, both ends I'm going to start with the fingernail ground in you don't need a whole lot sticking out past the handle uh, got to remember to get up here in frame you don't need a whole lot sticking past the handle because you not you do not want to go too far over the rest I wouldn't recommend any more than three quarters of an inch okay Romy Allen wrench be prepared next time same thing with everything else put it in till it stops one two three put it in till it stops one two three that's all the tightening you need to do I don't know what kind of wood this is. It came in a grab bag, a bottle stopper grab bag from Woodcraft. It's a good hard wood. That's not much grain or character to it. Get the tailstock up here. Tighten the center in, get my six inch PSI tool rest. If you get the PSI tool rest set, fair warning, this is not hardened steel. And it's glued in. See if I'm about at center line. Okay, I'm center line. Let me check my frame here. I think I'll scooch it over just a hair. Okay, I got five minutes left, so I gotta hurry. Uh, fingernail grind in. First. 2600 RPM.
You can come to the side. Use the side. Do you see how that goes in? Quick. Makes a good clean cut. You can see the thinness of that groove. Okay, let me find the Allen in We'll switch it over to the bowl grind, show you the difference. Gotta work quick, get this video as short as possible. Don't wanna get mama mad at me. I may not get dinner tonight if I do that. Again, not very far out. Put it in, bump it three times, put it in, bump it three times. This is the more rounded bowl gouge grind. This is more for your wider radius cut. So with both of these, you can actually roll some pretty good beads. I'm horrible at beads, but I have had some turn out. And this you can go down the side if you need to, but it makes a good wide cut. But anyway, I'm going to shut it off here. <clears throat> and I'll be back pretty soon with another video. Thank you all for watching and I appreciate all my subscribers.